I want to thank the Lord for uh, this young man. He's going to come. We were on uh, David Crabtree's show. What's the name of it? On the record. Um, our school, our ministry was attacked the other day uh, by uh, a coward who, um, when confronted, had to take back what he said. But I thank the Lord that in my son-in-law, I told the church today, and I'm going to talk about that preacher we had Thursday night in a few minutes. But in him, for what he's doing, position he holds in the ministry, I have the right man with the right temperament, the right attitude, the proper courage, the articulation, and the bravery of the times. When we were, when a untrue thing was thrown out there and unchallenged, God blessed him to find the, the, the challenger, the speaker, and called him on the carpet. John, I want you to come. Let the church say amen. For the sake of accuracy, I will read the first part of this. Um, on May 18th, 10 days after we celebrated the first anniversary of the marriage amendment, while watching WRL's On the Record broadcast show, Brian, Brian Lewis, the chief lobbyist and political director for NCAE, North Carolina Association for uh, Educators, uh, he made a statement regarding Upper Room Christian Academy. After Jerry Allison lauded and praised our school for our efforts in Southeast Raleigh and, and the successes thereof, he made a statement and said that, well, Upper Room Christian Academy has had some major accountability issues. And after he made that statement, he didn't elaborate. He was quite unprofessional and amateurish. He did not elaborate or say what he meant. He just left it out there. It was a, it was a vague attack and statement. So on uh, May 21st, God allowed me to run into him at the General Assembly. And when he walked out the door, I introduced myself. I said, hello, I'm John Amanchukwu. And you made a statement about our school about a week ago. Well, 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 well what, what school are you talking about? Well, I'm talking about Upper Room Christian Academy. And his head goes down and his eyes get big. And he says, well, uh, what, what did I say? I said, you made a statement about our accountability. He drops his head again. So I say to him, I said, well, when you mention accountability, were you speaking of the fact that we downsized in October? Because if you were, that's a representation of accountability that we downsized because we are accountable to our stakeholders. I made it clear to him that there are reason for downsizing was for the lack of funding. There were committed parents who were a part of our school, but we could not keep it going because we just didn't have enough. So is that not accountability, Mr. Lewis? And then he mentioned, well, you know, inside the public school system, we test our students. Well, I, would say, I said to him, well, sir, I would have you to know that Upper Room Christian Academy, we test our students as well. And matter of fact, our students oftentimes outproduce and outperform the students inside of the public school system. On average, our students score in the 75th percentile on reading mathematics and language arts. And then he dropped his head again. And then he got to the heart of the reason why he made his vague statement. He said, well, you're past him. And whenever you hear that upper room, you know something's getting ready to happen. <laughs> Lord, have mercy. Whenever someone says your pastor's getting ready to go down, he said, well, your pastor came out against the president, Barack Obama. So I looked at him, and the Holy Ghost rose up in me. And I said, well, what does that have to do with education? And what does that have to do with your vague statement about Upper Room Christian Academy's accountability? 
What he wanted, what he thought was that the reason of, the reason why we downsized was because uh, pastors spoke out against Barack Obama, and then people started leaving. But I wanted to make it clear to him at that very moment, eyeball to eyeball contact, looking him in the face. I'm not a chief lobbyist, but I serve the God of the Bible. And I looked him in shot of his face and I said that you are wrong for what you said and what you're stating. And I want you to be sure about something. Upper Room Christian Academy is dual accredited, accredited by ACSI, the Association of Christian Schools International, and, and accredited by SACS. Uh, which the public school system was accredited, accredited by as well. And he drops his head, and he begins to walk away. And that left me feeling some kind of way. Upper room, let me, know you, let me tell you something. How can two walk together unless they be agreed? Pastor, you are a gospel preacher. And every gospel preach, preacher needs some faithful gospel walkers. Do we have any gospel walkers in here this morning that are say we stand with our man of God, not simply by looking like we stand with him, but walking like we stand with him? The apostle Paul is left on count that the disciples, the apostles, follow steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. Pastor, what did I say to you? Stay on the wall. Don't come down. Keep fighting. Regardless of the rocks that are thrown at us, Reverend Barber threw a rock a few weeks ago as well. We will not stop fighting. We don't die, we multiply. We will keep fighting the good fight of faith and before we shrink back and get afraid and get timid, we'll add some more to it. If there anybody in here to say, I'm a gospel walker and I support what my man of God is doing. When people say that Pastor Wooden has spoken against President Obama, notice this, they never say anything specific. Because personally, I'm not against President Obama. What I'm against are policies that are wrong. And every policy that he has uh, supported that hurts us, I've been one of the few preachers who has had the courage to point that out. If that makes me against anyone that I'm guilty as charged, but we are in a day, um, I've been mentioning him lately because I'm, I'm, I'm studying, I'm reading a book that showed how uh, Hitler got the church to succumb to him. It came down to the church having to choose between two leaders, their allegiance to God or their allegiance to government. And Hitler formed a government. See, in, in Germany, they had a state-run church. Hitler said that these preachers, they're going to do what I tell them because they're preaching for their miserable salaries. Two preachers, Niemöller and Bonhoeffer, stood against him. Most of them, all the other preachers and in this day and time where we find more and more preachers beginning to pledge their allegiance to government and, and begin to endorse things as Al Shafton and many others are endorsing things that are clearly written that are against what's written in the Bible I will not pledge my allegiance to government where government is against God my, my allegiance is to the God of the Bible Amen. And for God, I will live. And for God, I will die. Amen. Amen. So we thank the Lord for, for that. And thank you, our elders.